Hello everyone and welcome to Rhetoric 6620, Writing Assessment Theory and Practice. I'm Dr. Mark Scott and I'm a professor in the Composition Rhetoric Program here at Shawnee State University. Um, my background is in the teaching of writing and most of my publications are in writing assessment. So this is an area and a field of inquiry that I'm very familiar with and that I enjoy speaking about on a theoretical level. I'm also um, Shawnee State University's Director of Assessment and Accreditation. So I'm also interested in thinking about assessment in a very practical nuts and bolts kind of way as well and across many different disciplines. So some theoretical backgrounds, practical knowledge about how to do assessment in classrooms and in programs. Um, and as you can imagine, I'm probably not a lot of fun at dinner parties. Um, each week, in this class, I'm going to post a video that's going to give you an overview of the readings. It's going to try to connect some of the dots between some of the readings. I'll try to give you a heads up of what's coming um, later in the term. And with the readings, I'm also going to maybe direct your attention to places um, where you really do need to focus and other places where you maybe don't need to read quite as intensely um, or as closely. Um, in this video for week one, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the course, and um, I'm going to get you off and running with the readings for this first week. So that's what we're doing here in this video. So here's a quick outline of the course, um, things that we're going to do week to week, and kind of the big overview of what we're doing in this class. Um, every Thursday, I will make the next week's folder available. So right now it's Thursday, June 22nd, and the week one folder is going to be available to you shortly after I post this video and get the announcement sent out. So um, you should get an email um, from the announcement that I, that I submitted Blackboard letting you know that next week's folder is available and that things are due the following Thursday. Um, I set the deadlines for Thursday in Blackboard, but if you need to take throughout that weekend, I'm fine with that. There's no penalty. Um, if it goes beyond Sunday, I ask that you reach out to me and let me know that you need a little bit more time and we can work something out. Um, so Thursday, the following week's folder is available, um, and then you have the rest of that, that next week to submit your work. And then, of course, the following Thursday, uh, you'll get another email saying week two is available, so on and so forth. Um, I put together this video each week that kind of gives you a summary of what we're working on. Again, like I said, I make some connections between the readings, talk a little bit about how these readings are going to help us with the major assignments. The major assignments are due in week four, in week seven. Um, and you can find information about the first major assignment in the week one folder. So let's go there and I'll show you around a little bit in the Blackboard site what we're doing and what the weekly folders look like. So this is what our site looks like. Pretty similar to the other sites in the program and if you've had classes with me before I try to organize things in roughly the same way. So top left here um, if you want just one place to start with click the start here course information um, link that will give you a link to the syllabus, some course policies, um, other information about the course, and uh, there will also be a link to the first week. So if you just want one place to go to begin the course, start here. Um, homepage, that will just take you back to this, available on every page. Current week, um, this is our first week, and I'll talk about that here in just a second. Beyond um, each week, so Later when week two is available, there'll be a short amount of time where week one and week two are up here. And then once we're past week one and everyone submitted everything, you'll have you'll find that old work down in previous weeks. And staying in touch, announcements from the class. Every time I open up the class for the following week, um, I send out an announcement. That announcement should also push to your email, and you can find those announcements here. Um, if there's any announcements between Thursdays, um, I'll also keep it in here. If folks ask questions and it seems like it's something that's coming up with uh, an issue that's coming up with several folks, I might put out an announcement and um, try to help folks out that way. So here, click here for announcements. Course calendar, that's set up through the due dates that I, that I set up in um, the discussion board and also major assignments. And you should be able to see when assignments are due. So week one, um, there's a couple discussion board activities and we'll talk about those in a little bit. And here you see the course calendar. It kind of brings up when things are due. There's a help function, office hours sign up. I use Calendly, and uh, this is Calendly right here. You can click on a day, and these are these conform to my office hours. If you don't find a time in here that works for you, reach out to me and let me know. But you click this, and you kind of set up. You know, how do you want to chat with me? Do you want a phone 
conversation? Do you want to set up a Teams meeting? Um, I also use Discord every once in a while, so it gives you different options there. Okay, so our sign up. Um, the, the discussion board, if you want to see all the discussion boards that we've had in the class so far, you can click that link. Um, it's showing you the first two and then there's going to be a bunch that's not available to you when you when you open it. Um, it'll just have the current weeks and the previous weeks available here in the discussion board under the discussions. Library resources, links to major assignments. Um, the first one is available. You can take a look at that. Um, the project two will be available in not, in not too long, in a couple weeks, so you can see what's due at the end of the term. Um, and then my grades, be able to find out how you're doing in the class and then previous weeks. So that's an overview of the of the overall site. Let's take a look at what the weekly folders look like. So there'll be an introduction for me, some objectives about what it, you know, what I want you to learn in the course of that week, um, everything you need to know to complete the activities for the week. Everything's due on a Thursday, so do Thursday of week one. This is the place that you'll want to go to in order to dive into those course materials and to, and to do the work of the week. Um, if there's any links that I want, want to share with you, I'll, like example here in week one, I want you to take a look at that first project prompt. Um, you can find that link here and you can take a look at it. Not due until week four, but you can kind of get a, a sense of where we're going with the readings for this week and, and in the next few weeks. General discussion board forum, if you have just general questions about the class or, you know, you know, you just kind of want to vent, like this is this would be a good place to do that. Let's take a look at the Do Thursday of Week 1 folder. So the link to this video will be here. So that's an assignment, it's something I want you to view. Um, if there's things like a podcast episode, there'll be a podcast episode in Week 2. Um, there'll be another link for um, a viewing assignment viewing assignment or listening assignment, um, the week one readings, we'll click here, uh, course syllabus, Hewitt, O'Neill, and Moore's usable pass for writing assessment, and then Kathleen Yancey's historicizing writing assessment. You take a look at those, um, those readings there and read them online. Once you've read what I've assigned and listened to what I've assigned or, you know, viewed a, a video, then you're ready to do the work of the week, um, discussion, Board activity one for week one is kind of the, the standard fare in terms of introducing yourself. I do want to hear a little bit about your experience receiving feedback on writing. Um, could be a particularly positive or particularly negative experience um, receiving feedback on you know writing for school or writing on you know writing for pleasure. But I'd like you to share something, um, you know, something memorable that, that that's happened to you in terms of receiving feedback on your writing. Um, so that's part of. That's discussion board activity one. And then part two is thinking about those readings, the Kathleen Yancey and the Hewitt, O'Neill, and Moore. Uh, they're both histories of writing assessment, and I want you to think about those histories of writing assessment and kind of position yourself in them. And there's a prompt here that kind of explains that. Let me switch modes on you for a sec. Thursday week one. Discussion board activity. I want you to see the prompt, like how I'm grading your discussion board activity. So you create a thread, and then you see the prompt again, and then you type in here and do your fabulous stuff here. Um, if you want to see how I'm grading that assignment, you can take a look at the rubric, and the rubric is pretty much consistent for each week. And I, I really just kind of want to see, like, you did it, you kind of did it, or you didn't do it. Like, that's for me the rubric. Um, so if I set up some instructions, something for you to do, um, you follow those instructions, you engage the materials, you demonstrate some depth of thought about what you read. Um, if there was a word requirement, you met it. Um, if you do a little bit less than that, if you, you know, you know, it was pretty um, obvious to me that you skimmed the reading, didn't engage with the reading too much, um, or kind of, you know, halved it, then, you know, you'll get less than the full full points. Um, I try to make the discussion board activities engaging. I know that it can be tough sometimes, and um, but we'll try to mix it up. I'm particularly excited for the week two discussion board activity. But, um, you know, if you made a good faith attempt, full credit. So that's the week one folder. And that's everything I think you need to know to get started in the course. Let me take a little bit of time to talk to you about 
the, the two readings for this week. The two texts you're going to read this week are Histories of Writing Assessment. Um, Kathleen Yancey's Looking Back as We Look Forward, it uses a wave metaphor to describe different shifts in the field of writing assessment that she's observed over the last several years. Um, she introduces us to important terms like validity and reliability, um, terms that I'll talk about in a little bit more detail here in just a second. Um, she also introduces us to concepts like direct assessment methods or indirect assessment methods. Um, she also discusses the enormous influence that the testing industry has had on writing assessment and how we've moved away from that kind of thinking about assessment in the last, um, last several years, the last wave, if you will. The other text that you're going to read is Brian Hewitt, Peggy O'Neill, and Cindy's Moore, Cindy Moore's um, A Usable Pass for Writing Assessment, which begins its history, it begins its starting point before Yancey's history of writing assessment, and it also does a deeper dive on the terms reliability and validity. What are these terms, and why is there so much ink that's spilled about them? Let me try to explain it. Let me try to break it down a little bit. Reliability um, is important. It has its roots in the field of psychometrics, and the psychometrics is a, um, is a subdiscipline of psychology, which um, in a very short way to explain it is um, psych psychometrics is involved with trying to categorize folks and what they know, um, trying to quantify what what people know and the skills that they have. If you've ever had the pleasure of taking the Armed Services Vo Vocational Aptitude Battery, the ASVAB, um, you have the folks from psychometrics to, to, to thank for that. Um, they help put together instruments like that that kind of say, you know, we can't do years of studying somebody to know what they know. Can we give them a short test to kind of get a general sense of what they know? So um, reliability um, comes from the field of psychometrics, um, a term introduced by that discipline within psychology. And it, and it relates to the consistency of, of an instrument. So there's different ways to think about that. So one is inter-rater reliability. So if we're talking about a writing exam, um, with thinking about the reliability um, of that writing exam, one way to think of that is inter-rater reliability. You have two people that are scoring one piece of writing. Are they going to agree? That's what inter-rater reliability is concerned with. There's also test, retest, reliability. There's several different forms of reliability, and you don't need to know them all. Um, but test, retest, reliability is the, the degree to which an instrument, if you take the ASVAB um, tomorrow, is that score going to be more or less consistent or similar to if you take that um, the ASVAB two weeks from now? There shouldn't be a huge change uh, between um, administrations of that of that instrument. So test, retest, iterator reliability. There's a lot of forms of reliability to think about, but it's it's concerned with consistency. Um, can people get consistent scores, whether it's two people scoring it or whether you're taking that exam different times or you know, different conditions changed around the test, can you still get a more or less consistent score? Reliability. Um, why is reliability so important? Well, the testing industry has done a really good job of persuading folks, legislators, uh, policymakers, administrators, the public to some degree, that um, you can't really trust a test if it's not reliable. Um, and for many years, uh, assessing and evaluating student writing uh, was just deemed too difficult. Like you couldn't do it. And there's a difference between assessing and evaluating, and you will know that by the end of this class. Um, but it, but just assessing student writing was often deemed just impossible. Like there's no way that we could do it. Um, you couldn't get folks to agree, there, so there wasn't reliability. Um, and two, it was just super expensive, you know, to get people to score double blind scoring student essays and to get them to agree that that takes a lot of money, a lot of training and a lot of time. Um, so because reliability is difficult and it's expensive, testing companies sp spend a lot of time um, creating instruments that served as proxies for writing ability. So a timed writing exam that could be scored by an algorithm, or what was more prevalent, particularly when I was coming up in school, and maybe some of y'all had this experience too, vocabulary tests, um, um, multiple choice exams serving as proxies for writing ability. 
did that because reliability was just too difficult to obtain. Um, it was very reliable to get somebody to take a, um, a multiple choice test. There's going to be pretty reliable scores. You get them, you know, here's 10 questions out of a bank of 100. We're we'll giving you another 10 questions out of that bank of 100. They're more or less the same difficulty. Your scores are going to be more or less the same. They were reliable between administrations of that. Um, people who were closer to the classroom, so teachers, educators, um, critiqued the validity of such examinations. Um, so validity, in short, is whether or not a an exam, an instrument, a test, an assessment, an evaluation, to what degree is it measuring what we want it to measure? Is it actually measuring writing ability? Um, if you're trying to measure writing ability, for example, is it really valid to use vocabulary as a proxy? Um, and like reliability, there's a lot of different ways to take a look at validity. There's internal validity um, that involves different aspects of a test. Does the context of a test impact student performance, for example? If the test is trying to measure something like writing, does the test have a robust understanding of that task and address different components of that task? Um, we'll read about this work later in the term, but other scholars have inquired about how socioeconomic factors have impacted the validity of writing assessment. We're beginning with these readings because the tensions described in these in these readings they remain. Um, the field of writing assessment has found some com some common ground, and there's some agreement about what's important to us as folks that are professionals in the field of writing assessment and scholars in the field of writing assessment. But there's there's still a pretty robust conversation and disagreement and tension between folks in writing assessment, which is made up mostly of teachers and teacher scholars, and the field of psychometrics and the folks that are in the testing industry that say we think that you should play students using these instruments that we that we tend to disagree with in terms of how valid they are in actually assessing student writing. So we're beginning with that because these tensions they do remain um, and particularly in the advent of machine scoring. Um, you know I'm not a betting man but I think that these tensions are only going to deepen as anxieties about chat GBT and AI um, and other, comp and other um, technologies, they further complicate writing assessment. That's a lot for your first video. Um, each week, you can expect, expect me to share some of my thoughts about the readings for the week, try to make connections between the readings and what it is that we're going to do, um, and tie those readings to how we're going to use them later in the term. Um, of course, I'll respond to your posts on the discussion board, and I'm looking forward to, to reading what you think about these readings. Um, just so you know, um, your first major assignment, again, there's a link for that in the week one folder. Um, it's you um, analyzing, breaking down your thoughts about a position statement about writing assessment and connecting it to things that you've read. So the things that you're reading this week, they're important, they matter, and you will want to make sure that you're bringing them to bear on that first major assignment that's due in week four. So take good notes, um, have a clear understanding of what's going on, ask questions if you don't understand what's going on in the reading, um, so that you have a good body of knowledge to draw upon for that first major assignment. That's it. You made it through this really long video. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I'm very much looking forward to working with you this term.